1.5 million tons, is the total weight of materials that Elon Musk aims to launch to LEO per day once the Starship project works smoothly. It is equivalent to 250,000 tonnes sent to Mars. These belong to Elon's ambitious strategy to deliver millions of tonnes of materials for many years to build a fully self-sustaining city on Mars. Such a huge number, right? Of course, to make that possible, as Elon said, we really need 10 launches per day at 200 tonnes per launch, and that's where Starship version 3 comes in. Not only does it stand out for its impressive payload capacity, but the V3 also owns the insane and advanced super heavy 80.2 meter that promises to make you stunned. Let's dissect this completely new design in today's episode of TechMap. Elon Musk's 44-minute presentation recently dropped tons of new Starship information, and probably an update that makes you excited the most is about Starship's third version. This prototype stands out by its huge size of up to 150 meters, the largest vehicle ever known, including an 80.2-meter height booster and a 69.8-meter long ship. Compared to the V1 and V2, the V3 is the largest vehicle we have ever known, and of course the giant size is not the only feature we will talk about in this video. If you look carefully at the V3's render, we will see other three big changes, the hot staging ring, grid fins, and the engine section. Okay, now let's break each of them down. First of all is the hot staging ring, which has been turned completely into a Soviet-style hot staging system. Hot staging is used on Soviet-era Russian rockets such as Soyuz and Proton-M. The N-1 rocket was designed to use hot staging. However, none of the test flights lasted long enough for this to occur. As you can see, staying apart from the familiar designs on SpaceX Starship, the Soyuz design on V3 maximizes the surface area of the holes without compromising structural integrity. To be honest, SpaceX has been chasing a similar structure for a pretty long time. The initial design features six groups of cutouts in a semicircular pattern. For each group, there were 14 vertical supports to help maintain the structural integrity of the ring. Afterward, the ring evolved to become a new design where the half-circle configurations were ditched and with a more symmetrical layout for the cutouts. Thanks to that, the ring looks more airy without making the structure less reliable. It's safe to say that compared to the previous variant, the total area of removed stainless steel in the new one increased from 60 to 66 percent. However, after Starship's two test flights, SpaceX realized that the structure with 66% removed steel just adapted to the limited thrust powered by six Raptor V2 of the ship. Thus, if the company wants to install Raptor V3 or V4 with much more power in the rocket's next generation, they really need more venting on the hot staging ring. Because a lot of restrictions through the vents will cause an explosion on the vehicle, especially for the V3 ship, which is designed to have more than double the initial thrust. That explains the application of the Soviet-style hot staging on Starship. More holes, more simplicity, and more practicality are exactly what we immediately recognize in this structure. Soviet designs often favored simplicity and robustness over complexity. Hot staging eliminates the need for intricate mechanisms for stage separation and ignition, making the overall system more straightforward and reliable. Another benefit of the simplicity is to allow for mass production. Yeah, this is truly what Starship needs. Soviet rocket designs often focused on mass production and ease of manufacturing. Hot staging simplifies the rocket's overall architecture, making it easier and more cost-effective to produce in large quantities. Thanks to that, the Soviet Union's hot staging succeeded in numerous space missions, including manned flights, satellite launches, and interplanetary probes. This extensive operational experience demonstrates the effectiveness and reliability of their hot staging systems. What's more, the Soviet style has integration with Soyuz heritage. The Soyuz rocket family, which extensively utilized hot staging, has a long and storied history in space exploration. The design principles and engineering solutions developed for Soyuz rockets heavily influenced Soviet style hot staging systems and set them apart as a distinctive approach within the broader landscape of rocket technology. One more critical part is the grid fin. Most notably, the grid fin's location moved down pretty much and actually, it's unclear why SpaceX does like that. My guess is to stay far away from the extreme exhaust gas released from the upper stage during the stage separation. The grid fin's dimension is also increased. 
Honestly, I have no idea about the standard size of the grid fins on the Super Heavy. The only thing that I'm sure of is they have the size of a standard car, meaning over 4.7 meters long, but I think the width is greater than the width of the car, about 3.6 meters. Keep in mind that that is just a regular size for a grid fin on Starship V1. With the huge size of V2 and V3 boosters, those grid fins will be longer and double. Apparently, this change is compulsory. The size of grid fins on a rocket like the Starship is determined by several factors, including the aerodynamic requirements of the vehicle, its mass, and the atmospheric conditions it encounters during descent and landing. Larger rockets typically generate more aerodynamic forces during descent and re-entry due to their greater surface area and mass. Larger grid fins can provide the necessary aerodynamic control to stabilize the vehicle and maintain its desired trajectory. In addition, grid fins are used to steer and control the descent of the rocket, especially during the final landing phase. With the larger size, they provide larger control surfaces to exert sufficient control authority over the rocket's orientation and trajectory. Larger rockets like the Starship have greater mass and momentum, requiring more powerful control systems to counteract their inertia and maintain stability during descent. Larger grid fins can provide the necessary control to manage the vehicle's motion effectively. Beyond that, atmospheric conditions such as wind speed and density can significantly affect the behavior of a descending rocket. Larger grid fins can offer better performance in a wider range of atmospheric conditions, providing greater stability and control during descent and landing. Last but not least, larger rockets may incorporate redundant or oversized control systems to enhance safety and reliability. Larger grid fins can offer additional redundancy and margin for error, ensuring that the vehicle can maintain control, even in challenging situations. The final thing is about the engine section. It's great to know that SpaceX's Raptor has evolved into its fourth version. This revelation comes as quite a shock, considering it arrives less than a year after the testing of Raptor 3. Raptor V4 would have a net thrust of 303 tons of thrust, and the combination of 33 Raptor V4 will generate a horror power. Going from around 7,000 tons thrust to over 8,000, and I think we'll, we'll, we'll end up ultimately with more than, more than 10,000 tons of thrust. This number probably will increase more once Raptor is upgraded to 330 tons of thrust. Hopefully, higher thrust. Long-term goal is 330 tons of thrust, Musk stated. In comparison to the two previous variants, a significant of unnecessary components were removed from Raptor 4, reducing the complexity and dead mass on the rocket engine and even on the booster's tail. To put it into perspective, the booster tail of the V2 and V3 look neater than the V1. Some suppose that minimalism not only reduces the total weight, but also could half the propellant loading time when a booster is loaded with propellant. It would be unsurprising that the change in the whole Starship could lead to a change in OLMA structure. Among four launch pads that SpaceX plans to make operational next year, according to Hypothesis, Pad 2 would be set up purely for V2 and V3 with a total redesign of the OLM and a taller tower. When Pad 2 comes online, Pad 1 will receive a total OLM overhaul and possible height extension to the tower. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.